the mysterious Georgia Guidestones, built in 1980 and oddly placed in seemingly one of the most random places you could think of. If you have never heard of the Georgia Guidestones, then keep watching because you are probably going to want to at least be aware of some of the strange and alarming things actually written on them. So I've known about the Georgia Guidestones for a while now, but I finally took the time to go there in person and see them for myself. So we flew to Atlanta and then drove 120 miles east of the city into the small town of Elberton, Georgia. And as you can see, this place is literally in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by cow pastures and farmland. So now we are here at the Georgia Guidestones. It's very hot outside and we are in the middle of nowhere. But I didn't go all the way out there to look at some glorified pebbles. What makes these stones so bizarre is the history of how they came to be and what exactly is engraved in them. So roughly 40 years ago, a man going by the name of R.C. Christian commissioned the Elberton Granite Finishing Company to build these stones on behalf of a small group of loyal Americans who seek the age of reason. He then described how he wanted the stones to be built and that they would serve as a clock a compass, a calendar, and also that they needed to be capable of withstanding catastrophic events. As alarming as the instructions were, the Granite Company still did what RC asked and built the Georgia Guidestones as he commissioned them to. The stones were apparently very expensive considering hundreds of thousands of pounds of granite were used, but it was no issue for Mr. RC since this project was being richly sponsored by these loyal Americans. Now what do these stones actually look like today and how do they act as a clock and a compass like RC described? Well similar to other ancient sites around the world, the Georgia Guidestones have parts of the granite chipped out to specifically align with certain astronomical events and timelines, such as a channel through the stone indicating the celestial pole, horizontal slots displaying the travel of the sun, and a sunbeam through the capstone that marks noontime throughout the year. As weird and as seemingly unnecessary as that is, the most unsettling thing is what was actually engraved in the stones. Written on the face of each stone tablet are 10 guidelines, almost like a counterfeit of the 10 commandments, only with its own completely different agenda. So let's read through the list real quick, and I'm going to start with number 10 and lead up to number 1. So number 10, be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature, leave room for nature. Not sure why they said that twice. Number nine, prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite, whatever the infinite is. Number eight, balance personal rights with social duties. Number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. I can see where they're coming from. Number six, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court, which sounds similar to the United Nations. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. That honestly sounds great. I can agree with that. Number four, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. That's where you get into some gray areas because what is reasonable to some may not be reasonable to others. Number three, unite humanity with a living new language. Sounds like a one world language agenda. Number two, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. And last but certainly not least, we have number one to tie it all together. Number one, Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. This guideline in particular raises major red flags because there are almost 8 billion with a B 
people on the earth. Which means that in order for this to be accomplished, roughly 94% of the world's population would need to be wiped out. So you can probably see why this rule is so controversial. Another odd thing is that these 10 guidelines are translated into 8 major world languages. English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. And on top of the structure, a message is written in four ancient languages. Babylonian, Classical Greek, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphics. And the message says, let these be guide stones to an age of reason. So since these were built and opened in 1980, people from all over the world have come to see them in person, and these have been a prime site for conspiracy theories, as you would imagine. Who is RC Christian? Who are these supposed loyal Americans that sponsored the project? And most importantly, why? Why build these stones in the first place, and why here of all places? Although there are many theories as to why they were actually built, when you read the 10 rules, it honestly sounds like the basic guidelines to rebuild a devastated civilization. Why else would RC specifically request that the stones be capable of withstanding catastrophic events? It sounds like this group of people, whoever they are, are craving a new kind of control over the human population. But there are simply too many people for centralized man-made control. So in order to have the kind of control they are vying for, the population must be reduced significantly. Hence rule number one. One thing we should notice though is that rule number one doesn't say reduce humanity to 500 million. It says maintain humanity under 500 million, as if the reduction would have already taken place prior to this guideline having to be enforced. And yet another very odd thing you should know is there is another tablet separate from the main structure that mentions a time capsule placed six feet below the site. The only thing is there's no date. It leaves the day the time capsule was supposedly buried and the day it is supposed to be opened blank. Maybe because it's not supposed to be buried or opened on a specific date, but rather a specific event, whenever that event may take place. And another thing you should take note of is that the Georgia Guidestones were built during the height of the Cold War, when everyone thought that World War III was imminent which would have been the perfect opportunity for them to rebuild a devastated civilization and reshape society from scratch according to their own liking had World War III actually happened. But thank the Lord, World War III did not end up happening because we would probably be living on a very different planet right now. So it honestly sounds like these individuals are either planning something or are aware of something unknown to the masses and this is their own special way of subtly yet publicly warning the public of this new world order of theirs and what they want it to look like. And when you look at how aggressively and even desperately modern day governments are vying for more and more control all for the sake of peace and security, this new world order is looking less like conspiracy theory and more like conspiracy fact. So now with all that being said, if you didn't know about the Georgia Guidestones, now you know. Just know that I didn't make this video to scare you, but simply to remind you that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Basically what I'm saying is, don't allow yourself to be distracted by insignificant political divisions petty offenses, and things that you think are the enemy, but rather are just things distracting you from the true enemy. There is a greater enemy at work in the shadows, and people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. So it is up to us to know the truth, to be aware of the enemy's schemes, and to be the light and the salt of the world, to preserve the earth 
to shine a light in the darkness and to resist the enemy so that he may flee. And remember that the wheat and the chaff are growing together. So if you see an increase in wickedness, just know that there will be an increase in righteousness to counteract it. If you want to see more videos like this, I have a new playlist on the channel called Exposing the Enemy if you want to check that out. I hope you have a blessed life and I hope to see you again soon back in the sanctum. Thanks for watching.